in my opinion, the loss of Kelvin Benjamin at the beginning of the season led to the maturation of the Super Bowl caliber quarterback and MVP of the league soon to be announced. That is Cam Newton. Uh, for the very simple reason that prior to this season, um, when Kelvin Benjamin was drafted last season, you saw that on a lot of third downs and big, uh, big downs in general, you saw Cam forcing the ball to Kelvin Benjamin, pretty much firing a cannon to the 6'5", very athletic, just all-around great receiver that Kelvin Benjamin was, and hoping that the size of Kelvin Benjamin uh, would pay off. And a lot of the times, these errant throws led to uh, incompletions. Some completions just because of the fact that Cam is such an unbelievable arm, and Kelvin Benjamin is so tall and so uh, so mature at wide receiver, despite that being his rookie season. But uh, half the time, you would see a, a rocket that would just sail over Kelvin Benjamin's head. And it didn't necessarily lead to a maturation of Cam Newton, the pocket passer, because in his mind, at least in my opinion, you would see that he would use him as his safety blanket. If things broke down, you just look for the 6'5 tall receiver um, and you just try to use his size and his strength to complete the pass. Whereas the loss of him at the beginning of the season um, took some toll on the offense. Obviously, he had uh, his worst performance as a quarterback at the beginning of the season due to uh, what was perceived as some bad offensive line play and just a lack of weapons in general. I mean, prior to Kelvin Benjamin going down, you could very easily make the case in just terms of receiver and not including tight end that Carolina had the worst receiving core in the league. Going into the season, you could make the case. Um, whereas now, you see a, just a total complete effort, and it's because the loss of Kelvin Benjamin forced Cam Newton to progress as a quarterback in terms of a pocket passer, reading coverages, um, and dissecting them and just beating them flat out just as a, as a smart pocket passer. And obviously his physical skills um, could never be questioned. 6'6", 260, just unbelievable size and strength. But his ability to combine that with progressions as a pocket passer just has allowed them to really master um, a lot of aspects of offense, but specifically third and five, third and six. You would never really, at least in my opinion last year, you would just see forces to Greg Olson and Kelvin Benjamin. You kind of just knew that was where they was going. Whereas now he sees defenses and he can beat them. Um, and each aspect, that aspect that was uh, nailed out and perfected to the point that they're now in the Super Bowl, you can see it's trickled down to every other phase of their offense. Whereas Jonathan Stewart now is unbelievable as, as a running back because of Cam's size and, size and speed and his ability to pass the ball accurately and efficiently down the field. Cam Newton as a runner himself, who... In my opinion, their template is very similar to Seattle's, except for two key differences. Cam Newton is beast mode. He's the hammer. I mean, Jonathan Stewart is also a downhill, crush your bones running back, but Cam Newton is the hammer. And unlike Seattle, they have a legitimate deep threat. And being able to run the ball efficiently, they have the best running game in the NFL, um, has led to a maturation in every other phase, whereas now teams really don't know how to defend Carolina. If you try to stop Cam... Um, the new emergence of Ted Ginn, which I, is just unbelievable to think about because teams will always try to take away Greg Olson for the top three offensive tight end that Greg Olson is. But Ted Ginn, and this is just an unbelievable stat, truly unbelievable. Ted Ginn has 10 receiving touchdowns this year. Of all other wide receivers that had 10 touchdowns this year, the two closest receivers in terms of Ted Ginn's reception total are Doug Baldwin at 78 and Alan Hearns at 64. Ted Ginn had 44 receptions, 10 of them were for touchdowns, and you could see that the systematic ability of Cam Newton to break down an opposing team's defense has allowed him to understand when it's time to take a shot and go for the home run, home run ball, because the guy that has 10 touchdowns and only 44 receptions proves that he has understood when it's time to systematically destroy a team downfield. I mean, there are so many times this year where you would see Ted Ginn would have two, three, four receptions. And half of them are touchdowns. And it's just understanding what the defense is giving you, beating a team down just with the rough style that they play, and then taking the shot when it's there. And the offense and the defense works seamlessly because the Carolina defensive unit is unbelievable. Unbelievable defensive unit. They get you off the field quickly, and the Carolina offense wears you down and destroys you. And eventually what happens is that you can't stop Jonathan Stewart because you're tired and you're beat up. Stopping Cam Newton is a unbelievable task especially in the red zone and in short yardage situations and then you have a speedster like Ted Ginn that can pull the stop and go on you whenever you really feel like it and Ted Ginn has elite elite like top one percent in terms of wide receiver speed but never was able to um, really put it all together due to a lack of I guess understanding 
um, different routes, different coverages. But it's it's so simple this year in that when the opportunity is there, run straight and I'll throw it to you. And yes, he's had some painful drops, but just the sheer amount of opportunity and quantity that's there is so apparent in the fact that 44 receptions, 10 of them are touchdowns. The closest guy is Alan Hearns at receiver with 64. That's 20 reception difference. That's a 33% difference. And to put this in perspective, Brandon Marshall, who led the league in touchdowns, or was tied, had 109 receptions that led the league. Ted Ginn had 44, and Brandon Marshall only leads Ted Ginn by four touchdowns. Let that sink in. That is a 65 reception difference. He has more than double Ted Ginn's receptions, and Ted Ginn has only four less touchdowns. This, just the total maturation of Cam Newton, the pocket passer, has led to a more potent offense in every other phase in terms of Carolina's running game, Cam Newton and his offense in the running game, their ability to keep their offense on the field in short yardage situations, and to understand when it's time to hit our deep threat downfield to make a defense pay. Um, I mean, that Arizona defense was a legit top five defense in the league. That was by no means a pushover, and they killed them. They killed them in every phase that a team can be killed. That was the most points a team has scored in an NFC championship game. Carolina did that, but that's just my opinion. I want to know what you guys think. This is that both all things sports, and I'll see you guys later.